seek you and find you and love you and also love everyone around us. God, we praise you and we thank you. We are so grateful for you and all of our blessings, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity that you gave us through your precious blood of Son of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you in his precious name. upsetting the religious leaders right. every time he went to the and then he went to the synagogue and all things on Sunday I mean on the Lord's day on the yes. Sabbath he healed a woman yes, yes. and the, the religious leaders were all upset mm -hmm. and uh, so they were wondering and so last Sunday was so encouraging he, he yes. said listen the kingdom of God is this little mustard seed yes. and it's going to grow it's going to grow into a tree. The, the, the kingdom of God is this little bit of yeast in, in all this flour, and it's going to grow. And it will be encouraging. And then immediately now, immediately he follows it up with these hard words. And uh, I asked Judy if I could skip over this passage and keep going on. <laughs> and she said no. <laughs> words. Uh, this is uh, Luke chapter 13. We've got the parable of the mustard seed in the east, and now we come to these words of Jesus called the narrow door. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. And someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? And Jesus said to them, Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, we ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you, or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there, and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places 
at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and first who will be last. These are the words of Jesus Christ, divinely inspired and perfect. And we need to talk about this narrow door to door door today, but my fear is that I don't want my words today to get in the way of the gospel. I don't want my words to cause any of you to doubt your salvation. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask my angel, my precious Judy, uh, to pray. Pray for me today. Pray that my words aren't going to mess this up today. Father, thank you that you're speaking to us join together and sing our praises to you because you alone are worthy of our worship. And we can open your word, Father, your word that is living. It is not dead words, ancient words. It's words that live, that teach us the truth. And at the beginning of this scripture passage, Lord, it talked about Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. He knew the time was short. He knew that the end was coming and his death and burial and resurrection that we gloriously celebrated two weeks ago. But Lord, he knew there was going to be a time that the door would be closed. That, that wonderful door that talks about Revelations 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I will come in and be with him. And Lord, we thank you. That is the promise. That you are preparing a home for us. But Lord, we know that there are many, many people who struggle with the desire to, uh, for works to be their means to enter your kingdom. We know that you talk very clearly. It's not by works, it's by faith alone. And so, Lord, I pray that you would speak through Mark. I know he's been wrestling with this sermon and praying over it, and he does not want to be in the way. Lord, we thank you for the Greeks who came and talked to Paul and said, Sir, we would see Jesus. Lord, can we see Jesus today, hearing, inviting, pleading, for people to come and make him the Lord of their lives. Thank you that you have a word for us to speak. You have a word for us to hear. And you have a to speak through your servant. For your glory and your honor. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. That's the sermon. So we're going to have to close it again. And go on home. <laughs> Alright, everybody. Why is it great? Right? The... Jesus is, is going through the towns and villages, and a man's been listening. We don't know his name, we don't know who he is, we don't know where he's from, but, but he's been listening to Jesus teach, teach, and teach. And based on what Jesus is saying and the response of the religious leaders, he, he just stands up and shouts out, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Because you see, the, the group that Jesus is talking to are religious people. They're, they're the Jewish people. And they believe, they're religious people, they believe because they were born from Jewish parents that they're going to spend eternity in heaven with God and with Abraham and feast with him because they were born Jewish people. But, but Judy was right. There, there's some key words that start off this text Jesus, it says, Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. That's, that's, a new, that's a new time frame for us now in Luke. We, we, we've turned a corner here. And now, from now, Luke, from Luke 13 all the way to the end, Jesus is steadfastly going to Jerusalem. And we know the rest of that story. The disciples don't know that. Uh, the, people, the people there don't know that. The lady that healed uh, didn't know that. But Jesus is on his way to the last supper with his disciples. To a rest while he's praying in the prayer garden. To his trial. To his crucifixion. To his burial. To his resurrection, to his ascension. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And this man says, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Do you have that question this morning? I do. It seems like only a few people are going to go to heaven. 
Because look at our world. The, 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 the government is getting more and more secular every day. They're passing federal laws against Christianity and Christians and the things that are true in the Word of God that, that we believe uh, and hold are now against the law in public schools and hiring and, and, and government. And, and we see that it seems like evil is growing more and more and being accepted more and more. We, the, the statistics of our convention, we have fewer and fewer baptisms every year. We have fewer and fewer church plants every year. And it's so easy to get discouraged and, and think, am I, am I on the right team? Because this team ain't doing so well. Am I on the right team? And, and we, we get so afraid and we start wondering about these things. Uh, will only a few people be saved? Will only a few people be saved? And so I want us to look at this passage. My goal today is not to make you doubt your salvation so we can have some more baptism. I, I don't want you to leave here and, and wonder, am I saved? I, I don't want you to do that today. I, I don't judge anybody. I'm not, I'm not the judge of anybody. But I don't want you to leave here today uh, doubting your salvation. That's not the point. The, the point. the The point today is for us to be encouraged to show, to share the word of God, to sow that seed, that mustard seed, that yeast. We're the farmer. The seed is the gospel. And, and the goal today is, is a word of urgency. To share the word. Let's look at, let's look at this uh, this uh, salvation, this kingdom of God, it requires a sincere effort. It requires immediate attention, and it requires personal self-examination. I want to go back to Luke chapter 8. I think Luke chapter 8 will be a good introduction for us. Luke chapter 8 is the parable of the sower and the soil. We talked about that Luke chapter 8, that was probably last year sometime. But Luke chapter 8, this, a, a large crowd was gathered, verse 4, and people were coming to Jesus, and he told them this parable. Uh, Luke 8, verse 5, a farmer went out to sow his seed, and as he scattered the seed, some fell on the path. It was trampled on the birds ate. Then there was a second. The, some fell on the rocky ground, and it came up and the plants withered because they had no moisture. And then the third, some seeds fell on the thorns and it grew and choked the plants. And then number four, some seed fell on the good soil and it yielded a, a crop. And so uh, later on the disciples said, you know, what does this mean? What's the farmer? What are these soils? What are you talking about? And so in verse 11, uh, Luke chapter 8 verse 11, Jesus says, here's the meaning of this parable, the seed is the word of God. That's what we said last week, that, that mustard seed. That's the word of God that we're planting. But, but look at these four soils. You're, you're planting this seed. You're sharing the gospel. But it's falling on four types of soil. And uh, the, the one on the path, verse 12, they hear they hear, but the devil comes and takes it, takes it away. They don't believe. They're not saved. Verse 13, some of the gospel, some of the seed falls on rocky ground. And, and they receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe for a little while, but in a time of testing, they fall away. You know who that is. You know that person. They started off big and came forward, got baptized, they were so excited, but then their prayers weren't being answered the way they wanted. Life didn't get easier. They didn't get rich. They didn't get healthy. And they fell away. And then that third soil, the seed fell on thorns. That's they hear, and then they go on their way. And life's worries and riches and pleasures choke out the gospel, and they don't cure it. But the fourth soil, the seed on good soil, are those with a noble and good heart. They hear the word, they retain it, and by persevering, they produce the crop. That's that narrow door. I want you to see that. These other, we spread the gospel. And not everybody is going 
to accept the gospel. They just aren't. That's just the way it is. I wish every time we shared the gospel, anyone who had never believed, I wish they would believe and accept, come, be baptized, and grow in Christ. But they don't. It's not my fault. It's not your fault. It's not the farmer's fault that some seed fell in that way. It's just, it's the way life is. It's, we have free will. We can decide to follow Christ or not. And so there's, there's that narrow door. That narrow door is the good soil. And it stands for noble, good heart. They hear the word and they retain it. They receive Jesus as Savior. And they're thankful. And he becomes their Lord. And they live their life for him. And they produce fruit. I don't know what kind of fruit. But some of it's small. Some some of the Gospels have some 60s, some 30, some 60s, some 100. But, but the point is that the good soil, the narrow door, yes. they are producing fruit for Jesus Christ. Yes. You see? That's, that's the people. That's what he's talking about. So this, this sincere effort, he said to them, make every effort. You may have King James that says, strive. Strive. Uh, strive. For the good. Strive for the gospel. Strive for that narrow door. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door. That word in the original language applies to two groups. One is athletes. And the other is soldiers. They use that word strive. That word make every effort. For athletes and for soldiers. And for the athletes, they strive to win the gold medal. They strive to win the race. For the, for the army, for the soldier, they strive to win the war. It's, it's, a, it's a battle. It's every effort. Um, imagine the Olympics. The Olympic Stadium. Imagine the Olympic Stadium filled with people cheering. And the announcer says, now we're going to have the 100-yard dash. Do any of y'all want to participate in the 100-yard dash? Come on down. Make your way down here. We're going to have the 100-yard dash. Wouldn't that be dumb? <laughs> because those, those men, have you seen those men? They're stick men. They're solid muscle. Have you seen the ladies? They're, they're just solid muscle. And they run the 100 yard dash. And, and what is it now? Under 10 seconds, something like that? You know? They train. They strive. They make every effort to get that 100 yard dash. They live that. They get up every day and think about it and work on it so they can win that goal. Jesus says, strive. Make every effort to walk through that narrow door of salvation. Make every effort. That, that indicates that there's a word there that we don't like. And I use it with fear and trembling, and it's the word exclusive. That's a, that's a bad word in American language. That's a bad word. We, we want inclusive, in, inclusivity. That, that's what we're all about in America. Inclusive. But the gospel C is exclusive. The door is narrow. I, I, I hate to say this, but it's my heart and soul. It's the gospel. Jesus is the only way to salvation. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not okay in America. That is not all right. That's not all right with your friends. That's not all right uh, with your family. It's okay for you, but I, I want choices. I want options. I want to pick door number one, door number two, or door number three, and hope I get the best, hope I get the new car. <laughs> the gospel is not that way. In, in John chapter 14, John chapter 14, uh, beginning in verse 1, Jesus is comforting his disciples. He knows he's leaving this, this John chapter 14 is in the last week of Jesus' life on earth. And he's trying to comfort them. And in verse 1, he, he knows they're troubled. This is at the last, the last supper. And he knows they're upset, they're troubled, they're talking, they're worried. And Jesus says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you... I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Everyone except Thomas. Remember Thomas down in Thomas, verse 5? Thomas says, Lord, Lord, we don't know where you're going. We don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? How do we know the way to the narrow door? John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen, it's not my words. Jesus said, Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me. So I, I can't water that down. I can't fix that up for America. I can't decorate it. Can't you're a great decorator. We need that baby to be decorated or something. No. It, it, we've got to work on that because we're saying the only way to eternal life, the only way through that narrow door is to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior Lord. Lord. Receive Him and as your Savior and Lord. It's exclusive. And Jesus said many Many are those that are going to try to get into that door, but will not be able to. They want to get to heaven on their own terms. They want to find their own way. Wait, 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 wait now. I, Pastor Mark, oh, I've got you on this one. You said salvation is a free gift. I did. You said salvation is a free gift. I did. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith. That is not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I can preach on that. I wish I was. <laughs> but I'm not today. Verse 10. For we are God's workmanship created for good works. So salvation is a free gift. It's a free gift. We're not saved by works. But we are saved for good works. There's a big difference. We can't come on our own terms and, and come to church. I went to church. I went to church, uh, well, Mother's Day. I took Mom to church. I went to church. And, and I, believe, I believe all this stuff in the Bible, whatever, whatever it says, and, and I, I got baptized uh, when, when we were kids. We went to vacation Bible school and we got baptized. Mm -hmm. So th those are my terms. And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you. I never knew you. Make every effort. Many will try to enter but not be able to. Jesus says those same words in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. And he talks about true disciples and false disciples. There are false disciples out there. There are people that talk about religion, talk about God, talk about Jesus, talk about the church. But they're false disciples. And here's the true disciples. This is the same, the same words. Matthew 7, verse 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone, not Everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform miracles? And then I will tell them plainly away from me. Away from me, you evil doers. And then he follows that up with the parable of the wise and the foolish builders. You know that? The wise man built his, his house on the solid rock, Jesus Christ. And the storms came and blew against it, and the house was dead. But the foolish man built his house on the sand. And, and the storms came and blew, and the house was gone. They're both building. They're both hoping many will come. Many are trying to get through that door. 
But the sincere effort isn't there. So we come to the second thing that salvation requires immediate attention. And that's that's why I decided the way to do this. Plus, Judy said, I had to do this today. <laughs> but we have to do this because that narrow, here's, we, it takes immediate attention because the door is closing. Yes, sir. Thank you. The door is closing. Yes, I, don't, I don't know if you've had a chance to read any news today. I don't encourage it. But I, <laughs> Iran launched on 300 <coughs> missiles to Israel while we slept last night. Thankfully, they have this this umbrella or something over them, and they shut down 90% of them. But, I mean, that, that's going to heat up things yes, yes. a little bit. And I, I just feel like Jesus is going to come back. Brother Warren, I feel like Jesus is going to come back. He's coming, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. I think famine, famine in Gaza, famine in Africa, famine, famine in Nashville, Tennessee, earthquakes, earthquake in New York City. Have you ever heard of that? Earthquakes, famine, all the things that Jesus said, watch for these things. World have been happening. The door is going to close. Verse our text, Luke 13, verse 25. The owner of the house gets up and closes the door. You'll stand outside, knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he'll answer, I don't know you or where you came from. They'll say, We ate and drank with you, we taught in your streets, we heard you. And he will reply, I don't know you. See, that's the thing. He says to those outside, I don't know you. You've done all this, all this stuff. You, you've gone to church and, and you've given a tithe when you could, and you, you've done you've done this stuff, but I don't know you. Both in all of all those passages. When will the door be shut? Let's see. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, the disciples asked, when are you coming back? And Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour. Not even the Son of Man. I don't know, but he gave us some signs to look for, to watch for, and be ready. And I believe those things have been done. Listen to Revelation 20, verse 11. This is the end, this is the end, of, this is the end of the story. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11, the judgment of the dead. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, John says, I saw a great white throne, this is the white throne judgment, and him who was seated on it, and the earth and the heavens fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done, recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. Hades gave up the dead that were in them. Each person was judged according to what they had done. And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. And the lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found, written in the book of life, was thrown into the lake of fire. The door will be shut. The master shut the door. Yes, yes. And we don't know when. Well, you, you can say it's been 2,000 years. I'm not going to get in any hurry now. <laughs> You've missed the whole point. Amen. If you're playing with this thing, if you kind of grew up with it, you're thinking about it, but you've got time. I, I still I still have my friends, and I still want to have some fun. And, and when I get old, and I can kind of tell I don't have much time left, I want to get really, I'm going to get real serious about this. That's the old Folks, you're going to miss that door's going to close. Amen. Amen. And it will, not, it will not open again. And so the time to act on this, the time to share with your brother and sister, the time to share with your neighbor is today. Yes. You can't, you can't make them get saved. You can't save them, you can't make them get saved. But you're the farmer and you've got seed. I'm the farmer, I've got the seed, and I've got to scatter that seed now. There's an urgency in what we're doing. An urgency in what we're doing. Hebrews 9.27. 
<clears throat> Hebrews 9.27 is talking about me and talking about you. Right. Hebrews 9.27, as people are destined to die once, people are destined to die once, and after that to face judgment. So Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are waiting for him. I have an appointed time for my death. I don't know when that's going to be. Most likely, drive a call on old people. <laughs> Dale's got a hand. We're so glad you're here, Dale. We don't know. It's, all the funerals aren't just old folks. Amen. So we, we don't know. We don't have tomorrow. We can't plan these things. There's an urgency. But salvation, I, I don't know you, evil doers. There's a third thing here. I want to go to it. I'm out of time here. The text needs a personal. The third thing is salvation requires personal self examination. Personal self-examination. The salvation requires sincere effort. It requires immediate attention. It requires self self-examination. I don't want you to doubt your salvation. That's not what this is about. That's right. Uh, but what we need to look in our hearts. Verse twenty-eight. We continue on with our account. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves will be thrown out. And people will come from east and west and north and south and take their places at the feast of the kingdom of God. And indeed, there are those who are last who will be first, and the first will be last. Salvation requires personal evaluation because the odds are so great. The odds are so great. We're, we're going to be shocked when we get to heaven at who's there and who's not. God's not going to be surprised. But we're going to be surprised. We're going to, we're going to see that, that, that old person that, that came on Sundays and never said anything, never taught a Sunday school class. We had no idea that they were leading people to Christ. They were, they were giving their, of their offering, their small offering. They were giving their missions, helping people. They're going to be there with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. They're going to be there. And some of the big, big shot pastors that we think are just fantastic, they may not be there. We don't know their heart. <clears throat> Careful examination because of the horrible mistakes. I'm just going to come to I'm just going to come to one more one more passage. Luke 16, Luke 16, verse 24. <coughs> I'll save these other five pages for. <laughs> After Ephesians. <laughs> Not that long. <laughs> Luke 16, the rich man and Lazarus. You know that story. But let's look at it again in light of, of, of Jesus and this narrow door. Luke 16, the rich man called uh, to, to God, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm in agony in this fire. So the rich man had this huge house. He did whatever he wanted. He, he had everything he wanted. And Lazarus was the poor man who lived out outside. And uh, talks about him. They both died. Lazarus went to heaven to be with Abraham and Isaac and the Lord. And the rich man went to hell where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I want you to see this because of the urgency. Let him come. And Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things while Lazarus received bad things. But now he's comforted here, and you're in agony. Verse 26, I can't let this go. In verse 26, besides all this, listen, between us, between heaven and hell, between us and you, a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. But I, I, I always thought in my mind, I thought, I, 
you know, if you don't know Jesus, you'll go to hell for a little while, and you pay for all your sins, and then eventually you get to go to heaven. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Jesus said there's no way to get from there to here. And, and I, want, I want to help. I, I don't think my son, I don't think my father uh, was a Christian. So when I get to heaven, I want to try to help him. No. There's a chasm. And so the urgency, the self-examination, is to make sure that I have, to make sure that Jesus knows me. Yeah. That's what he said over and over. Depart from me, I never knew you. That's right. Do you call on his name? Did you hear the prayer this morning? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, yes. in Jesus' name. Is that your story? Yes. In Jesus' name? Are you living for him? Right. Do you read his word in the gospel? Right. Are you, are you producing fruit? Of the gospel. I don't know how much. I don't know how often. But are you making an effort? Are you striving for that narrow door? Am I striving for that door? Is it what my life is all about? Like that, that hundred yard dash athlete. He wakes up with that hundred yard dash every day. He takes his time. He works. He trains every day. And that soldier wants to win that battle every day. That's on his mind. He's training and preparing. It's, it's a part of who we are. I don't want you to doubt your salvation. Amen. But the last words of that, the last words of Luke 13, 30. Indeed, there are those who are last will be first yeah. and first will be last. You can know you're saved. You can have assurance of salvation. If you Jesus, if you have Jesus in your heart, you, he's your Savior. You believe He died on the cross for your sins. Mm -hmm. And you're living for Him yes. as Lord. Right. He's part of your life. And so I wanted to close today. I, I asked a Sandy, if you sing a hymn, uh, out of the white hymn, you'll find those under the seats there somewhere. It's hymn number 275. They just, they just wrapped it all up uh, for me. 275. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior, Holy Thine. Let me feel Your Holy Spirit. Truly know that You are mine. I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to you. Fill me with your love and power. Let your blessing fall on me. I surrender all. I surrender all. Come and lead us in this. That will be our benediction. And uh, take these words to heart.